if we're talking about someone that you've been with or a reality you've manifested before and you're trying to get it back, you're not the same anymore. And again, where you were before manifested in you not having it anymore. So the best case scenario, it's nothing like it was before. I mean, obviously all the good stuff, but like, and way better. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Welcome to the Roxy Talks Manifestation Podcast, your raw, unfiltered, and unapologetic source for all things manifestation related. I'm Roxy Lee, and for the last decade, I have been researching and developing my signature 360 method, which combines behavioral science, quantum physics, and the law of attraction to help you manifest a life beyond your wildest dreams. Visit RoxyTalks.com for more info. Now, let's get into it. How do we keep our manifestations? Like, hello, you put it in the title. Let's talk about this. Okay, so keeping your manifestations is like, there's a few things going on. First of all, it's, well, I can tell you, here's an easy example. If you don't do the work, like the self work, we talk about how like self love and like you have to do the self concept stuff. That's like, that's what I always talk about. You, you do that stuff to keep your manifestations. You don't necessarily have to do that stuff to get your manifestations which is exactly why we're talking about this. If you, cause if you don't do the work that like originally kept you away from your manifestation to begin with, that hasn't gone away, even though the thing has arrived in your 3d reality. And so this is why if you just fake your way through doing some self-concept work and you're just doing it to get your SP, they will disappear again because you haven't actually changed. And the reason they aren't here now has not been fixed. And so even if you do manifest it back into your reality with the tools of manifesting, if you don't change what originally kept them apart from you, it's it hasn't gone anywhere. It's still fucking there and it's ready to peek its little head out when it's time. So you really have to work on who you are, who you are becoming in the process of manifesting what you want, You want to obviously make sure you're working every single day. There's no days off. There's no days when it's okay to be your old self if you want to make real change and lasting change. Like, I mean, not that it's not okay, but you're conscious of what you're doing. You're working towards something different and you're not letting yourself fall into your old patterns because your old patterns don't serve you. So, or at the very least, your old patterns got you here and and here's not where you want to be anymore. So there's no point in continuing them. So... While it's on its way, you need to be becoming the version of you that is able to keep it, right? Like your job in the interim, while it's not here, is to become the version of you that sustains it. That's your job in the meantime. You're over here worried about what the universe is doing and you're not doing shit for yourself. I mean, you're not doing the work required to sustain the manifestation once it does arrive, okay? So Your job in the interim while your manifestation is cooking is to be doing the work of somebody who can have a relationship and not fear, doubt, worry, entertain their insecurities about their person leaving, all the whatever, who the whatever your reason that you don't have them right now, you need to learn how to not do that shit in your mind all day. Because whether or not you have the person in your physicality, that's has nothing to do with your own internal BS, right? So Your job is to find a true solution to that type of mental occupation, literally. What are you doing with those thoughts all day long? If you don't switch it up and do something different that supports you keeping what you want, you're not gonna. How do we stay positive when we get a little bit of what we are manifesting? I get what you're saying, but it sounds like you're like, how do I stay positive when I get a small piece of cake? 
what are you talking about? You have, what do you mean? You know, like with love, what do you mean? How do you stay positive when you just got some of your manifestation? Gratitude, appreciation, going back into the work that got you that, not slipping up. And also knowing like, if you have a tendency to feel worried, stressed, doubtful, insecure about your manifestations when they come through, then know that about yourself. Or if you know that happens when, when good times come, that you start to think when the, when the bad times are going, when do the bad times come? And then that's what sets you down the, the path, right? So if you know you do that, then support yourself through those times and do extra self-care on those days. Uh, you know, call a friend, watch your favorite movie, dance around your living room, watch some cat videos, like do the extra stuff to lift you up when you're having those days and times when you know that it's, you might have a dip, even though something good came along, you're, you know, programmed to have a dip after that, which is like a lot of us do that. <laughs> not me. I never, not in my reality. I would never. If that was you in your life, then a smart move would be, you know, to use your awareness and discipline to know that that's coming or know that that might be possible for you um, to slip down that road and then to apply extra attention to making sure that you don't and then make that a habit because that the the desire to not desire, but the propensity or whatever to go down that road is not going to go away. with SP last night, but we didn't have a seance or a kiss like normal. I haven't seen him in eight months. I want to get back to normal. What should I do? Take it fucking slow. God damn. Jesus Christ. With love. This person just came in after eight months and you're like, why are we married with children yet? It's like, hold on. Savor the moment. Let the manifestation unfold. It's been eight months. You've been back one night. Enjoy it. What are you talking about? This is why you don't keep your manifestations, Barbara, with love. Sorry. This is your God. You, this is your, this is your ancestors. Okay. They're, they are screaming at you. This is exactly why I titled this one I'm talking about. You did something amazing and now you're over here picking apart what's not going right about it. This is why you didn't have your person for eight months. Okay. So, like, let it unfold, but keep the mind going in the right direction. But, like, hmm, with love, right? Like, it's all good. <laughs> Don't freak out. You haven't done anything wrong except assuming something's wrong. Or, you know, like, I wanted to get back to normal. Why would you want to get back to normal when normal caused you to have eight months without seeing them? My opinion would be you would never want to get back to normal. So find what the new thing is going to be. What's the new normal? What's the new way you guys are going to be together? Because whatever happened before, which I don't know anything about, I just saw the the recent post. Um, I don't know what the story is. I don't know why you weren't together for eight months, but that and whatever you're doing right now are, I promise you, are the, they're sisters, they're cousins, if not sisters. So um, don't be doing that shit anymore and start being grateful. Like you were really, you know, you, you, you shared it and you were grateful about it. Stay there. Don't go looking for a problem, you know? So, um, this is why. Dina says, hmm, maybe I've been trying to manifest old normal instead of a new normal and that's an issue. You know what? Maybe it is. Maybe it is because, again, I'm telling you, everyone goes through the same shit together. So, this is, um, this is something that like, I've never really talked about it like this before. And I think that this is, um, kind of like not to, um, you know, Esther Hicks, but it's kind of like leading edge stuff, right? Like if you're trying to make, if we're, if we're talking about someone that you've been with or a reality you've manifested before and you're trying to get it back, 
you're not the same anymore. And again, where you were before manifested in you not having it anymore. So the best case scenario, it's nothing like it was before. I mean, obviously all the good stuff, but like, and way better. So, so yeah, maybe just like, like have some patience. That's what they want me to tell you. Have some patience and some gratitude. Um, soak up what you've done. And, oh, here we go. Also, this is another thing. Ooh, mm mm-hmm. Don't throw, this is why I know it's not me. I feel like this is ancestral because this feels familial. Don't throw what you did for those eight months to get here out the window in one night for having them. You worked on your shit for eight months to get here and one night and you're back to your old shit with love. Listen, some people in this community, I love you guys. I really, really love you guys. And it makes me so like frustrated and upset sometimes to see you literally want to not be on this planet anymore because another person isn't giving you attention. It sounds absolutely ridiculous when you say it out loud. I know that it hurts and I know that it feels like the end of the fucking world, but you are making it like that because you keep acting like it's the end of the world. It's not. And you can live a happy life without them and you don't have to end your life or, and I'm not saying that you are Dipti, I'm just saying there's multiple people that I've heard would, they would literally rather end their existence than not be with somebody. That blows my fucking mind. Over a an SP? Are you kidding me? Do you know how many people aren't alive that would like to be? And you want to end it because someone doesn't like you? It's insane. And I and I'm sorry this is coming out like this and listen, I'm not a therapist. Do not come to me for therapy. Nobody is that important. Nobody is that fucking cool. Nobody is that sexy, rich, hot, funny, attractive, charming. Fuck you. And f- how dare, I'm sorry. This is with love. I'm, I just, like, the, the desperation with which I see some people trying to get somebody else to give them attention that they won't fucking place on themselves. I've had it up to my fucking eye holes, man. They're overflowing with this shit. You matter. You do need to love your, it's you, but it's you. So put that love on you. They are just a reflection of you. And if they're, if the way they're treating you is making you feel that bad, that's you. That's how bad you're making yourself feel by not doing this. Doing the self-love to get the person is not self-love. It's manipulation, and that's why you're still fucked up. When you are pretending to self-love to get your person, think about that. What if they did that to you? What if somebody pretended to love you just to get your your, your, your attention and your affection. Okay. That's what you're doing. The reason you're feeling so empty is because you're pretending to love yourself. And this is a universe of reflection. So that empty love is being reflected back to you. And this is why when you want to manifest a person, if you love yourself, they come through right away, which we've seen Week after week after week, people come through and tell us, I just focus on myself and you just fucking call me out of nowhere. Gee, I wonder fucking why. Is it because it's a a mirror that you're living in and I've been telling you this the whole time? I don't know. But if you are cheating yourself of the self-love, 
because you don't think that's the true, because you don't, you would rather someone else give you the love than apply it to yourself. This is why you don't have it. It doesn't work like that. This is not how earth works. And you'll always be empty if you try to get it from them first. When you, if you ever worked in a restaurant, when you go into training, they give you like, and you go to the computer, they give you a fake number and you can enter in, you know, orders and stuff. And it doesn't send it to the kitchen. Nobody pays for anything, right? So it's just for you to practice on the computer. Then when you become a server or a bartender, you get a real number or the number, it gets unlocked or whatever. And then every time, whatever you punch your orders in, it gets sent to the kitchen. Okay. So, so if right now, if, if in the beginning of the self-love journey, you're just practicing, you're just punching the numbers in, you're just figuring out the computer system, you're just figuring out how to love yourself, cool. Don't quit the job before it's time for you to get on the floor and become a real server. You know, don't quit the job after training's over. Once you learn the techniques, that's not when you give up. That's when you start applying them. So the end goal should ne- of self-love should never be to get someone. The end goal of self-love is to fucking feel love. Isn't that what you want? Homework. Catch yourself complaining and just stop. <laughs> That's going to be our homework. I love it. I fucking love it. That's exactly what we all need to do, okay? Um, and I want to add a caveat to that. So what I want you to do for the next week, this is our homework. We're going to work on, um, because what complaining does, complaining diminishes our life. It diminishes our power. It diminishes our value and it diminishes the perceived value of what we've already manifested, right? What I'm trying to say is like, when you're complaining, you're saying that what this, this stuff around me is not good enough. The stuff that I've already manifested ain't shit. That's what you're saying when you're complaining, essentially, right? So, so let's do this for the next week for the the homework. We're gonna work on complaining, which is to not tear down the manifestations that we have built. Like this is actually really fucking incredible. I built this just so you guys know. All this pink shit you're looking at. All this, me, my whole body, I'm manifesting this in this very moment. I'm doing this. I'm keeping this in check, in in fucking play. Just so you know, I'm doing all of this. And so are you for your worlds. Okay, so I'm going to take what Dina said right here. I'm always in the present moment wishing I was somewhere else. So we're going to take that and that's going to be part of our homework too. We're going to be looking out for any time we want to escape the current moment and get somewhere else. And then we're going to apply, we're going to say, you know what? So what, what, there's a few things that I want to say, like that beautiful paradise moment is happening right now. That happiness is right now. I can feel that happiness right now. I feel that way right now. Like let's turn this, the complaint into, which is, I don't know, 360 method. Have you ever fucking heard of it? Maybe let's turn the complaint into something good for us, right? Like into a, a free token for a future manifestation that we're going to enjoy. So I want everyone to start every day this week with an intention. I want you to just set a quick intention. I am aligned to XYZ reality. I am aligned to that reality. And that, I think I mentioned this last week. That's something I've been saying for a few weeks now. I'm like actually using the word I'm aligned instead of just saying I am it because why the fuck not? I'm always experimenting. So I'm aligned to my blah, 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 blah reality. I am aligned to that reality. I am calling this into my existence. I have called this into my existence. And like straight up affirming that you are it, you have it, it's on its way, it's unfolding, you know it, you're living it, and every step you take is taking you closer and closer. And another thing I keep, you guys keep hearing me say like, oh, we're so aligned or I've been in alignment a lot. Like if you follow me on Instagram, I've been posting a lot about that too. That's part of it is like, I'm setting these intentions and I'm, I'm implying, not implying, I'm intending that I'm aligned every day. And then when I see the alignment, I'm affirming it. I'm agreeing that I'm aligned. I'm continuing down the path and I'm not letting 
Like, remember we talked earlier about, you know, wanting to get from A to Z and being mad that step B isn't step Z. I'm not letting step H, I, J, and K deter me from getting to step Z because they're not step Z yet. I'm taking the H and I'm loving the H and then I'm taking the I and I'm loving the I and I'm taking the J and I'm loving the J and I'm affirming that I'm moving through it along the way. And of course that rhymed. So, um, this is what I want you to do for homework. I want you to first every day, we're going to start out with your intention. I am in alignment with XYZ reality. I am in alignment with my chosen reality, whatever it is. Like say I'm in alignment with, uh, my happy, healthy, whole life or whatever. Set that intention. And then this is a Mel Robbins thing. This just popped up in my head. So this is becoming a three-part step. Thanks, Mel Robbins, to this next step. The next step you're going to do is I want you to visualize yourself not achieving that, but doing something to get over a hump in the middle. So I'm going to give you an example. I have been affirming, I'm trying to, not trying, I'm affirming a certain weight of my body. And I've been affirming this specific weight for a while. And I had, and I'm going to affirm the 3D for a minute because it's, whatever. The scale is really only going up. It was not going down. And even though I was like, <laughs> the scale keeps going down. I see it going down every day. It was not. And so I heard, I was listening to Mel Robbins. And she was talking about, you know, don't, if you're, if you're, if you want to run a, ma a marathon, don't visualize yourself crossing the finish line. Visualize yourself halfway through when you want to give up and pushing through and still pushing, you know, making it and getting through it. Because then you're not, you're, you're getting yourself through the hard times and not just like this, this potentially unbelievable lofty end goal. So what I started doing is instead of affirming that number that I want to reach, which that hasn't changed, I haven't like given up on my end goal. It's just now I'm affirming the next number down of like the next, you know, and then to next tens, tens of the, of the section, right? I'm, I'm like, I seeing the number change from this to this, which is like from this tens to this tens, you get it, right? Um, and since I started doing that, the scale is moving down, it's working. So I don't know if that's my own belief. Maybe I personally had a hard time visualizing that main number without doubt, but this other one of seeing just going down to the next 10 and seeing myself surpass that has moved things in the right direction. So what I want to say is, number one, set your intention. I am aligned with XYZ reality or I'm aligned with XYZ. Number two, see, visualize yourself getting through a tough moment along the path of that, of that reality. And you can do the same one every day for the next seven days, like the same intention and the same um, visualization if you want to make it easy. And then the next part is going to come in throughout your day. The, the real homework comes in is stopping yourself from complaining because when you complain about your current reality, you get yourself, you keep yourself there and you're, you're removing or you're preventing yourself from getting to that visualization point. That's like a checkpoint. And you're, you're, you're out of alignment with what you said you were in alignment with, with your intention. Does that make sense? So when you're complaining, you can reset, restate those intentions. Actually, what the fuck? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm aligned with my reality. I'm aligned with blah, 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 blah. It is happening. I don't care how. I just know that it is. And then maybe you can go into your, do your visualization real quick, your quick little, um, you know, scene of seeing yourself surpass that hump. And then there you go. You're back in the energy in theory. That's, you know, we'll try, we'll try it and see what happens. And I appreciate you all. I love you so much. Uh, we're all raising our vibrations together. You have the power. I believe in you. Um, fucking check you later, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs>